normal IC engine vehicle, the dealer actually makes a lot of money in service because yes. engines are complicated parts and you have pistons and fuel systems and so on and so forth. So uh, a large part of a dealer's income is from service. You know? yes, Whereas in the case of any electric vehicle, pure EV not being an exception, uh, the expectation is that the guy cannot make too much of money from service. No, but that is one misnomer we want to kill actually because uh, 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 although for client it's a free service like you know there is a reimbursement of certain money like you know whenever the these tickets have been submitted to the uh, to the OEM but more than that like you know so we have never given a slogan at any like you know as a pure EV level that electric vehicles are of uh, maintenance free actually so the, the education we are important to the dealer also like you know we have we are creating avenues that's how we are making the recruitments also from the automotive industry who worked in this after sales and service industry so we are educating continuously to the dealers what are the avenues even in the electric vehicle in uh, two wheeler let's say pure EV vehicles because we are selling our vehicles so let me only comment on our vehicles so we are showing them the avenues and creating uh, this spare parts also in terms of the warranties and everything where there is a sufficient income for the uh, dealer maybe not as high as the ice vehicle uh, but it is not zero like com compared to other oem kind of slogans or the whatever the 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 philosophy they have created so that kind of philosophy we have never generated earlier also now what we have done is we have started encouraging the dealers that you know these are the things where you should charge the client even many clients write to us we respond in a very professional and honest way yes the dealer is supposed to charge and has the right to charge actually so where we are telling them the roi model also in terms of the client also why they have to pay like you know in, in terms of warranty schedule what we have is like you know for many parts like you know wear wear and tear kind of things we did not give a three years kind of warranty so we don't want to kill the dealer on those parts see in the regular automotive industry many parts don't have warranty of more than three to six months that is where we were cautious in the beginning since beginning that you know we our warranties on major on the cost element like you know the powertrain elements yes we are keeping the quality the warranties are very very high because they are the the repairs and maintenance are also very it, 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 it dealer cannot do anything it has to be sent to the factory only for the replacement so wherever the elements are there which are common with the automotive industry like you know almost 50 60 small small components are there the warranty period is in in line with the automotive standards like you know brake cables bushes like rubber parts the the lighting parts the the abs parts even the some of the metal parts the color warranty everything so there we had been very honest since day zero we have taken the initial criticism that you know so and so ev company is offering unlimited warranty five year warranty on every part five years warranty uh, it's not a i mean in in our view it is not the right approach because a dealer is a very important element in this ecosystem for the client also not just for the company the dealer has to make profits, he has to sustain, then only he can provide a quality service to the a bunch of like, you know, ecosystem. Ecosystem is made by the consumers. So when the consumers are already like, you know, aligned for this kind of service approach in the automotive industry, it is not as high as a like, you know, your petrol vehicle because the, the oil change is not there, moving parts are not there. But in terms of ball bearings are there, like, you know, they can get trusted within one year like like uh, like a typical uh, two wheeler like you know when you drive it in uh, extreme harsh weathers and all they need to be changed like you know so the, there the we, we 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 have never given a warranty of 5 years kind of thing on these parts when we know that like you know when we have a technical understanding this is where i believe all ev companies should work on developing expertise on like you know the actual life cycle of each component then come to the real warranty conditions because I feel I am 100% confident the clients will, consumers will respect it if we are open and honest in our documentation, manuals, like, you know, this is how the warranty life cycle. See, they might see always like, you know, every consumer wants Dilmange more, like, you know, every, every time they want more. I mean, there is nothing wrong also, but it is also the responsibility of the OEM to stay 
very transparent and open like you know because so far the none of the evs have been driven like you know two wheelers have been driven for like you know we don't have a case study like you know some two wheeler electric two wheelers driven for 50000 km 1 lakh km and we don't have like you know 10000 vehicles which plied for even 20000 30000 kind of kilometers so we don't know what parts will fail at what time so if already in the regular automotive industry some mechanical parts rubber parts lighting parts already some trend has been created by professional industries and professional supply chain so we should take it as a as a benchmark rather than like you know saying that you know no i will increase some component warranty from 6 months to 3 years just because i am offering an ev vehicle so we at pure ev we feel that you know it won't work in the long run uh, again as i said like you know we might lose some sales because we are not offering as aggressive warranties as some of the ev companies out there but definitely the the, the dividends will get paid back to company like pure ev in the long run so and these kinds of fields that yes i have if not as in high income as a like a petrol vehicle but there is some income is there in the service which we should give because it is an attachment of like you know three to five years let's take a two-wheeler life cycle like you know some very good uh, petrol two-wheelers like you know they have a life cycle of three years four years six years also they have a resale value so even if i take a conservative kind of thing three four years kind of life cycle if i want to i'm talking about my electric uh, two-wheelers so that much attachment should be there between the dealer and the client if it is everything is free uh, dealer i mean we have to think from the dealer perspective definitely and there he has to make money then only not all the attachment is about the commercial but the commercial element is very important here as important as like you know the brand element the, the whatever the user, user experience element so that is where uh, and we have been aggressively chasing the dealers also you keep these sufficient spare parts and you go through the chat you can show to the client also this is the chart i have received from the pure ev these are the uh, warranty chart conditions and the labor charges and these are the uh, mrp of so and so part so and every that is the reason we are encouraging each and every client and dealer to go through our service ticket mechanism also because where they upload the warranty card so the the mis is taking care of the warranty determination they we, we confirm immediately to the dealer that you know this is under warranty you can give as a replacement from the spare parts you have and then back to back a replacement will come to you actually we're coming to the end of the uh, interview and uh, we'd like to uh, you know data is the new oil no, like exactly yes. so much yes. of oil but yes. uh, in terms of uh, gathering data about users uh, what we see missing is a telematics unit in uh, your vehicles true, right? true. so we just are curious to know is there a way that you can get a data dump when the vehicle comes to a service center or through some other means is there something that is kind of there in your mind about that so we actually like you know first i'll come to the iot part uh, device uh, so we have tested many iot uh, devices which are being supplied to the conventional automotive companies as well as to the electric uh, vehicle companies who are out there like you know which are being offered as optional as well as inbuilt devices at pure ev level like you know almost 6 to 7 big iot companies we have tied up and through who each uh, firm like you know we have tested 50 to 100 devices for our internal test drives and data pooling the data analytics has significantly helped the company i mean there i cannot have any disagreement uh, and a uh, few dealers also like you know have these vehicles with the iot devices so what is the what has stopped us like you know uh, not being able to uh, not not uh, did not implement at the product level at a like you know at every vehicle level the first thing is the the life of these iot devices first is like you know these are very sensitive electronic devices and there i have to be very honest like you know when they are driven in a uh, lot of like you know remote or town kind of conditions like you know the way people drive like you know there i don't want to blame the consumer because they have driven certain petrol vehicles that way so that is how they want to drive electric vehicles so there i we cannot go and have an argument like you know this is a new technology this is how you should drive this is how you should use this is how you should park this is how you should store and all maybe we can give some instructions or education in the uh, manuals but definitely we we cannot expect that they will follow so there these iot devices have become very sensitive that you know we have predicted that you know these, these devices might fail within one one and a half year of usage and any good device which has to work even for one and a half year good electronic device 
it is costing somewhere between uh, 3 to 5000 and then there is a uh, like you know subscription plan being given actually by most of the oems so when we look at 5 6000 kind of expenses when we did the customer profiling like you know every dealer like you know not not 100% but today 90% of the dealers are submitting a customer profiling at end of every month like you know let's say they have got x number of walk-ins how many they have converted what are the reasons actually that analytics company has and why they have rejected the vehicles who are in waiting period one is a waiting period another is a rejection in the rejection like you know we have like you know number of reasons like you know what are the topmost reasons actually there like almost 25 percent of people are going for the ice vehicles in the rejection actually and less than one percent like you know so far for seven years because of lack of iot like you know they have rejected the vehicle like you know so the and uh, I can say 3% of the rejection came because of the lack of boot space in the pure EV vehicles. So the IOT, when I think from the customer profiling who are buying my vehicles, our outlets, where they are, like, you know, Pan India, as I said, not just in cities, everywhere, uh, wherever, like, you know, we are seeing that the outlet is getting survived, we are appointing a dealer, actually. So they are there in the tire too, even in villages, our vehicles are flying. So at this juncture, we felt that 5,000, if we want to offer in the future, so what company has decided even for the next six months nine months also i want to reveal so we want to improve if at all like you know uh, we are asking these kind of questions to the dealer and the clients also let's say if you want to increase five thousand by the price what are the elements clients are demanding actually what they're demanding is like you know better uh associate this lcd kind of thing they want better and uh, better seat length and uh, as I said, like range always like, you know, everyone wants more like, you know, 85, 90 kilometers, whatever we are claiming on our website, people are getting it, but they want more actually, because there I can gain my sales part by adoption also. It's not about pure EV gaining sales, but overall adoption also. The pickup also, they want more, more actually. The quality improvement at every level, like, you know, they, many people are saying, sir, we are ready to pay another thousand, two thousand. But you please improve the quality at all aspects, actually. So when I talk about this 5,000 investment, like, you know, overall from consumer uh, between IOT and these things. So there are like, you know, another 10 priority items which I am seeing because of the feedback which is coming from the client and dealer only to me. So this electric parts, like, you know, definitely the data is important. Puri is able to capture, like, you know, whenever. But the only thing is whenever the vehicle comes to the uh, dealer, yes, we are able to capture the data. So there also, yes, we want to give those additional equipments to the dealer, like, you know, where they are able to rather than manually reading the data. Yes, we should uh, give certain devices where they are able to feed in kind of uh, data from the vehicle which takes a uh, few minutes kind of thing so giving it to client as i have explained in detail currently the company's approach the feedback which is coming from there only if at all this additional 5000 we have to spend almost 10 to 20 items which are there and where the clients are demanding not iot but these features and they clearly say that you know in so and so ice vehicle ice vehicle uh we have this feature like you know we have much better switches we have a longer seat length i get more pickup i want to travel uh there are people like you know who commute we have uh, in uh all like in you know, ap telangana and karnataka in rural areas they bought the vehicle i mean the dealership is in town so like these are like government teachers people live in like you know somewhere else they commute 60 70 kilometers per day so even 90 kilometer range also is an anxiety for those kind of people so they say sir like you know even 10 kilometers extra i will lose that my tension actually because sometimes what happens is like you know it does not do that full of full charge because what happens is 80 percent charge happens very quickly then the voltage reaches some some kind of uh, constant value then it enters into cv so we want to go beyond this 100 range like you know for high speed vehicles in the next six months like you know the company wants to put lot of effort in r d and everything like you know so where clients are ready to pay that extra premium and another thing what we want to tackle is the improvement in all uh, quality wherever we are seeing the failure rate wherever that 0.5 percent one percent failure rates are there like you know in all the components we want to invest more money and improve the quality and there many dealers have stated that uh, people are ready to pay additional few thousand bucks to get these uh, features see if you are able to offer it to the dealer right with no cost we can offer it to the see it's it's like you know these are the additional elements controlling or the data communication elements or the devices which we have to inbuilt in our bms 
and the controller so there is a cost increase like you know so even if let's say like you know client uh, is not getting the iot device it's not just the additional device i'm keeping because i want a sustainable solution here where like you know the controller let's say through lcd or controller or like you know these uh, like you know bms we have to read the data so those kind of updations also will cost the cogs actually so that that cost versus this cost improvement that is where i have explained like you know so i i got your question like let's say the client is not getting this device but the dealer uh, through dealer puri we has to get the data so today we are following a manual approach like a typical automotive approach that you know the uh, the client comes to the service center and through that like you know we pull the data so that is what we want to automate but without incurring any cost because that is very very important today no dealer no client for the same features they don't want a single rupee increase of price actually so when we want to have these facilities also even dealer has to pull the data and to give it to the oem so there also we want to ensure they have to be done without incurring any uh, cost increase at the oem level uh, the reason is like you know it is very open secret out there in the dealers or the market i mean people know also in the market uh, pure is very conscious on the uh, overall cogs and the profitability of the oem level as well as the dealer level so any step we take the cost consciousness is there like you know we don't want to increase the cost of the product to the dealer also just because like you know some features are there Got it. so we are keeping an effort but it will take 6 months like you know to those kind of devices to come at the dealer level uh, where they are able to pull the data automatically and feed into the pure ev so today yes we have a manual system and uh, it's not like you know only it's once in 3 months and that that data pulling is very easy also it doesn't take more than a few minutes currently whatever the system we are following so uh, nishan ji once again thank you very much for kind of spending time with plugin india yes. uh, thank you a lot of thank you to plugin india team yeah